what I believe needs to happen is if we're going to start with speech to text, we really need to do some explicit instruction first and teach the tool. Because if we don't teach the tool, what happens is they get on speech to text and they create pages and pages and pages of text. And then when they go back to edit, which is part of the writing process, right? When they go back to edit, they don't know where one one thought in one sentence begins and where one ends. And so then it becomes frustrating to them. And then they stop using, they abandon the tool and they don't want to go back to that as, as their skills develop as a writer, right? As the process of writing starts. So I think it's just really important to start with that explicit instruction first. So I have some, um, I have a tool that I'd love to show you if that works for you. Yeah, be great. Okay. Well, great. Let me share my screen. Okay. So I've created this document that you can use for explicit instruction. And it's really to have that time, right? Explicitly teaching how to use this tool first and then practicing that, right? So having that guided practice or that gradual release of responsibility. So during this explicit instruction, we're really going to start with really working with and I do and then having we do. That's where we're going to land right now. We're going to sit right there. And at the end, we'll do some practicing, right? Right along with our student and helping them so that they can move into that I do. So I like to start out with how to use speech to text. And I print this document for all of my students so that they have access to this as a reference and as a visual support. Because using these tools can be very taxing on our cog in cognitive load and our working memory. I refer back to this while I'm teaching a lesson. And if I say, oh, I want to use speech to text in this lesson, Remember, I'm going to go back to this document and review. So it's it's a nice tool to be able to have just kind of front and center. So first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to open speech to text from the home tab. And so what I have is right now I'm using Edge and using Microsoft Word Online. And so here's the home tab. And you want to make sure that you have that, that you're clicked onto that. And then you're going to go over here to open the speech to text tool. So I'm going to keep that closed, right? Because I don't want to use it now, but we want to be able to use that. And it's important in speech in, um, in Edge and working with Word, there's two ways to turn it on. You can either use this um, icon right here to start the dictation, or you can even just go here to start the dictation as well. So, And I thought of a third way to do that, and that is oh, the yeah. Windows H shortcut. And that would add another level of complexity on there. Sure. And if you have a student who where shortcuts are are something that they really want to use, then I would add that to this document. Practice that, right? Just that step one of how to get and open that tab and make sure that we have our dictate open. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to think about the sentence. So writing is complex and it is different than speaking to communicate. It's a different process when I'm thinking about written communication, but I'm using my voice to type. I kind of think about this as, so we want to think about what our sentence is going to be. We just want to start with one sentence. We don't want to overload. We're only going to do one sentence. And then we're going to practice a sentence. And here's the biggie. We are going to practice with punctuation. And so I want to write about my dog. And I want to say, Freya is a good walker on her leash. I mean, that's what I want to write about. I want to write about her walking. and But she's not very good when she sees rabbits, right? So I want to think about that. Freya is a good walker on her leash unless she sees a rabbit. All right, that's, that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write that. So I'm going to practice that. Now I'm going to practice it with punctuation. Freya is a good walker on her leash unless she sees a rabbit, period. So now I'm going to get ready to turn on my voice and dictation, and I'm going to say my sentence. 
And because we're only doing one sentence at a time as we're doing this explicit instruction, we're going to turn the microphone off then. We don't want to keep going. We don't just want thoughts and, and rambling on. We really want to be specific about the sentence that we write. Sometimes it's hard to get started. I have an idea about what I want to do and want to say, but I'm not exactly really sure how I went through that. And you saw that process that I was going through. Like, oh, I want to write about my dog Freya. Hmm, what do I want to write about? So sometimes just that cognitive load can be too much in working memory. And so this is a tool that I love to use to start and just using this voice recorder. So sometimes it's just really, I want to talk it out and I want to listen. And so this can be really helpful for students that are just learning how to do speech to text and really understanding that complexity of like what I say is going to be in there. So let's practice that. What I would do is I would just record my voice, right? And yeah. I would record the things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about my dog and I want to talk about her walking and I want to talk about how she's not a really good walker when she sees rabbits. Then I would stop that recorder and I would listen again, yeah. right? And I would listen to that and work with my students and say, okay, well, here are your ideas. So how can we put that into a sentence? So then it would take us back through that process. So now let's think about that sentence. Let's practice it out loud and put punctuation. Now we're ready to turn on the microphone and try that. So if we have a user that also needs text-to-speech, then we can use immersive reader to go through and do that. And so I've put that in here so we can practice listening aloud. So once you're done with having your student listen or read it out loud, right? If they're a reader, then reading it out loud or listening to it through immersive reader, then it's time to practice. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to I think about my sentence, which is it is hot outside. I'm going to practice it is hot outside, period. So this is just a practice sheet to be able to use with some sentences here. Maybe your student doesn't want to write about it is hot outside or, you know, the water in the ocean is cold. I mean, go ahead and put things in there that they recorded that they did want to talk about. And you can practice using their own sentences as well. It, the point is, is being able to practice using this tool without really having to do the cognitive process of writing. So we yes. want to practice and get really, really good at all these pieces above. So think about our sentence, practice the sentence with punctuation, turning on the microphone, saying our sentence with a period, turning off the microphone. So those six steps are what we want to get really great at and have that working memory and muscle memory of how to do that. That is the piece that we want to get to. And if we can make that engaging and we can make that fun and put some sentences in here that are meaningful to the student, that's great. Like, do that. This has to be a working document that makes sense. Yeah. So I found, like, really quick chunks, you know, of using this, you know, a couple times a day or even five minutes a day of just going in and practicing that. It doesn't take long for learners to be able to get really, really good at making sure they put that period at the end of their sentence as when they're using speech to text. And with any assistive technology tool, even even using text to speech, I mean, we need to have it um, task analyzed because there's a lot of steps and yeah. it, it can become very difficult to use. And so we need to ask ourselves if the tool isn't working, is it because um, is it because we haven't taught it and we need to do some explicit instruction first? Yeah. And if you're watching this and you have questions, you can put comments with questions that we can ask Sharon and then circle back around. So That's thank great. you, Sharon. You're welcome.